Today we're going to make a beer coaster concertina. Ciao dear hearts, welcome back to the studio. Don and I are so happy to be back from our vacation and to have you here with us today. And we're gonna have lots of fun, but first I want to um, introduce ourselves. My name is Katharina Giglio. The guy behind the camera is my wonderful husband, Don Diggison. And we wanna thank you in advance for all of your subscriptions, your kind shares, your wonderful comments, your thumbs up. We so appreciate all of that. And we also want to thank you for using all of our Amazon links which you find in the descriptions below and we want to thank you for your kind donations and for supporting our gallery in Fort Collins, Colorado 142 BIS. Thank you so much. And today we're going to make um, a concertina and we're going to use lots and lots of texture. Yes, I said beer beer coaster concertina. That's what this little guy is made from, is beer coasters. Someone in our family absolutely loves beer. And so I thought it would be a great vehicle to use. In fact, I've used them many times for concertinas. And um, <clears throat> I wanted to make um, something that would be really highly textured so that you could um, could see how to create more texture in your work. And so this piece, this is the back of the book. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> it has a lot of texture going on, lots of different layers. We're not going to do so many layers today, but I'm going to show you um, quite a few. So when you open it up, um, it tells this story, and yeah, there's a few flowers involved. There's lots and lots of texture going on here, too. <laughs> and um, I used a mix of fabric and papers and tissue and paint and built up a lot of different layers. So um, so anyway, I really like it and um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And so I thought we'd make another one today, something a little bit different though. So here are, here's my beer coaster collection. And uh, yeah, it seems like every place we go, I'm always picking up uh, some beer coasters. And um, they're really fun to use um, for different things. And the cardboard is just, it's a great, um, it's a great weight. So you can cut them up, you can use them for lots of different things. Uh, I like all the different variety and shapes and sizes. I think this one came from France. Um, and uh, so today I thought we would use these Heineken um, coasters. Now, here I'm gonna tell you, Don's gonna show you some stills. I'm not gonna go through the whole process of gessoing these because it takes a while to gesso. I used black gesso. This is what they looked like originally. And I used black gesso underneath, and then I coated them with white gesso in order to get this color, okay? And if you don't cover them with gesso, you're going to have bits of Heineken coming through. Now, if you don't mind Heineken advertisement, then go for it. You don't really have to do that. You can just collage or whatever. But I suggest that you um, definitely cover it up. Number one, num number, Number one, that it's going to prime your book, and number two, it's going to hold everything so well, um, and it's going to give you really good coverage. So anyway, so that's where we are. So we've got four pieces, and that's what I used for this piece here. Um, you can use as many as you want and make as large a concertina as you would like. Um, but um, this, is, this is what we've got today going on is four pieces. So once you get them all covered with gesso, um, then we're going to glue some tissue paper down and we're going to um, pull them all together. And so what I like to do is get them all covered first. Now to create the, the texture on the front of the book, we used a crinkled tissue. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute but um, on the inside, we used a flat tissue. So, because we wanted our story to come through and I wanted to use really delicate things like tissue paper and fabrics and that kind of thing. Now, I'm gonna position these close together, but not right on top of each other. 
and I'm trying to get them as close together as I can and leave a tiny bit of room so that the tissue paper can uh, bend. And here's the thing. Yeah, I know it's tissue paper. It's really delicate. It could definitely um, come apart. So we just have to be kind of careful with it. Now the tissue paper, you can use any kind of a more of a flat tissue paper like this and crinkle. Now, if you want it more crinkled than this, go ahead and scrunch it up and then use it. And I've cut these um, into strips just so it would be easier to use and to show you how I did it. So this is more crinkled. And so for me, this is gonna go on the outside of the book and you can make it any way you want to. But um, this is just a plain old tissue paper technique. And I've showed you this in other videos before, but, but we're gonna use it today like this. And if this happens to you and it gets dried out too fast, just go back and glue it back down. That's all you have to do is re-glue it. If you have to lift it up and reposition, then you can do that because don't you all have lots of tissue paper to use? I know I certainly do in the studio. Um, I always have white wrapping paper around. And in the studio, you won't be chatting it up with other people. So <laughs> it'll be easier for you. You won't dry quite as quickly. Um, you want a pretty good connection on there too. So the problem is that when you're using this, I mean, it's not super easy because yeah, you want it to wrinkle. You want the wrinkles to be there, right? So you have to keep working it, but it's really worth it. This texture is just so amazing and so cool, but you do have to work with it in order to get that great texture. So I just flipped it over and I am spreading my gel matte medium down. And we've got, we're gonna be using all gesso. We're using white gesso, black gesso, and clear gesso if you need it. You know you can get it on our Amazon links and we so appreciate your patronage about that. And um, <clears throat> so I've got the outside done and now I'm gonna do the inside. And this is gonna be much smoother texture. And this is just packing tissue that I got. I don't know, I think Meg might have sent it to me. But it just has a really cool like texture to it. And um, I loved it using it in the other book, so I thought we would use it here too. Okay, now this is the important part is to see if it bends. And it has to bend, so. And that one doesn't want to bend, so we're going to lift it up. So make sure you position it to make sure that it will, there's enough room in between. And if there isn't, gently lift it up. Or peel it back. And don't worry if it breaks apart, it'll be okay and then put it back down because it's got to be able to bend there. Yeah. So we're using plastic, so you don't have to worry if it, if it comes up. <clears throat> Oops, there we go. And Don's so good at this, he just follows me all over the table and it's really hard because um, I'm I am all over the place. There, okay, we've got our crunch back. All right. Okay, crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. Oh, I love it. All right, now if you've been following me for some time, you know I'm going to um, go back and glue some of these spots and then I'm gonna sand the edges. So I've trimmed it back with scissors and now I'm going to just lightly sand the tissue paper off. And if you pull it back too far, just simply, you know, um, 
re-glue or if you have to patch it, that's fine too. And I'm just gonna finish sanding all of this and then we'll come right back. I have my roughened book um, all ready and this is the outside of the book. And you can see it's, it's still got some pieces hanging off of it, which we'll get later on in the end. And I'm just using um, white gesso. Just um, I'm just kind of spreading it on the cover of my book. And then we're gonna let that dry. Now I'm not completely covering it with gesso. Um, I am just giving it a nice little wash, as you can see here. And then I'm gonna go over it with paint. Um, so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to let this dry and then we'll turn it over and we'll do the other side. That's going to give your book more structure. It's going to um, really um, give some more um, plastic to the, uh, the, uh, the seams so that it bends easier um, and it won't, it won't crack and break. Now, one of the things I really liked about it was that you can actually see through, you can see the light coming through in some of the gaps. Um, so it's just kind of cool. Um, I just really like the, the look of it. The outside is dry, so I've just given the inside a quick coat too, and I put it um, on the seams too to give it uh, a, little, a little help in holding it together. And now I'm gonna dry that. Then choose what color paint you want. So I'm going to use raw umber because raw umber and raw sienna are always in my color palette. And uh, you know, when you're making concertina books or when I am, when I'm making books of any kind, I'm constantly thinking about what story I'm telling, um, what, what do I want to talk about, you know, what, what's going to go on in the story? So this one, since I had to come up with an idea for you, um, the other book was um, abstract, and I know a lot of you are not inter interested in doing abstract books. If you are, then this is a perfect vehicle for you. But if you're not, um, this is going to be uh, based on childhood. And the other day, Don and I were kind of going through things and deciding what things we could live without and send to the thrift store. And I was looking through my book stash and I found um, An American Childhood by Annie Dillard. And I love that book. And it got me thinking that it would be great to revisit childhood. Sometimes I go back over um, my childhood um, um, in, in, in artwork. I'll, I'll revisit the idea of childhood. And um, I had a really interesting childhood, so I thought I would, would look at that today. So we're gonna put this color on and then we're gonna dry this, we're gonna let this dry, and then we'll come back and uh, do the inside cover too. So I'm painting the inside now, and then I'm gonna let that dry. I knew I wanted this book to be a little darker um, than the other one, and I, I like the way the color is uh, making everything show up, all the crinkles, um, the creases and um, you know it's giving us some nice contrast which is what I love this nice high contrast and lots of texture because life is about texture um, it isn't always easy but it, it sure is delicious So since I knew the theme for this book, I made some little tiny collages using an old um, Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale book. Um, and uh, I chose images that um, spoke to me about my own childhood. And, uh, and I just grabbed a few bits and pieces of things that um, I was kind of interested in. And then I've got um, fabrics, and tissue papers um, over here. The stripe I really like. I think it's pretty cool. 
and just plain tissue paper. And um, so I'm going to um, play with uh, getting my collage, you know, the way I want it. And um, on this book, I collaged the whole outside. Um, but I think I'm just going to do a cover for this new book. So, um, so I'm thinking that, so this will probably be my cover. And I may go over this a little bit more with um, a darker color. We just have to see, you know, what, what I want to do with it. So actually this will be my cover, won't it? Yeah, this right here. So that probably will work. And I, I'm going to go over the whole thing again with a white gesso. Um, but we're going to do that after we get some collage going on the uh, inside. So I went back with a little bit of uh, white gesso. And uh, I decided I really liked this piece here, this lonely little girl here. And um, so I'm going to put this, this is my last page. Um, right here. Now, when, you might want to consider creating um, small collages, like you do little bundles of fabric, just creating small small collage that you can use in other work. And a lot of times, it, it, if I'm just in the studio and I'm just playing around, I'll, I'll create a, a bunch of little, little collages. And then um, what I did was I just fussy teared them out and um, just thought, you know, I can use these for something else. And uh, and so I think that they're going to work perfectly in here because this is really um, my idea of childhood. And I had thought about putting this underneath here, so maybe I will pull this up a little bit. this print on the end. This is from a really old piece of document paper. There, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, we got that going. And I think, yeah, that's just going to rip nicely. Now, of course, when we finish, we're going to put clear gesso over everything because we want it, we don't want it to stick together. So, okay, I have to figure out the rest of it now. I've made some decisions about where to place things and I've started gluing them down. And this is, as I said before, a really old script. And old, old paper. So I'm giving it a nice coat of gel matte medium. And it is going to lump up. And sometimes your papers will lump up like that. They'll just wrinkle and you just have to let them dry. And that they'll be, they'll be fine once you let them dry. Um, you can smooth it with your hand too. But anyway, we're getting there. So I've got this little collage down and added a few bits and I used a piece of um, book cloth, antique book cloth here for the grass. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to use more of it or not. Um, so we'll see, but I'm going to sand this back and then we're going to work a little bit on the cover too. All right, so my, my composition is coming along. And uh, I am marrying the pieces together, the, the pages together. <clears throat> I collaged them and then uh, I went back with tissue papers and fabrics to pull it together. And then you can still see through the layers, but we're using, I'm using the the tissue and the fabrics to bring it together in, in a cohesive manner. So it, it, it 
kind of marries it all together. And I really love the, the yellow of the paper. So and we're going to use that and we're using some of this old fabric, which is absolutely yummy and delicious. And then I have some of this white fabric too, and I think I'm going to put a little bit of that on as well. It's coming along and um, I'm still working with the fabric and tissue paper and uh, you could say that the book here that this main image right here is really the focal point of my book um, and it represents to me playing with my cousins and um, on the side here it says paradise and uh, really you know my cousins were my very first friends as children growing up often that's the case and so this book is really about that so I'm really liking the way it's coming up I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to um, cut back some of the little layers now <clears throat> on the other book on this book I sanded back a lot to get this to this texture and this is a little bit rougher but I, I would go back and, and sand it but but we don't have that kind of time today so I'm going to um, just work on the cover in just a minute so and we'll show you how that turns out I'm just working on the front cover with a little bit of uh, white gesso and I'm just going to lift that off and then I found this little piece and I thought it would be really perfect for the cover and this piece I actually thought was going to go in here on this but it just didn't seem right to me so we're going to use it for the cover instead which works out really perfectly don't you think so I'm thinking I'm going to put it here like right about there and this little bit is going to go right here and I'm not going to cut it off. I'm going to leave it rough like that because the whole book is kind of rough. And uh, so I'm just going to give that some gel matte medium. And what I would do is I would go back and then probably sand the inside. And I want it a little bit closer. I want to. I don't, don't want it to be perfectly even. I want it to be closer to the end. Okay. And then you're going to be able to see the texture underneath that. So. And this again was a little collage, and I just like this part, so I just ripped that part out. And. This little girl in the flower and she represents me so there's the front cover well can you believe it we're at chow for now and um, I had uh, I enjoyed creating this little uh, beer coaster concertina with you and using my theme of childhood <clears throat> I'm going to go back and do some sanding on it it's still pretty rough and uh, but I, I love that about it too because it, it does represent kind of my childhood and um, just a couple of tips first of all when you're laying it out when you're laying all the the coasters out onto your tissue paper make sure you give enough room so that they will all bend and I would advise you to bend them first and then put the second coat down so there's there's one and then the other thing is use gesso liberally throughout your book I'm going to give this a nice coat of clear gesso at the end so there you have it hope you enjoyed it we thank you so much for being here and we send you our love.